So your teacher says it's time to learn how to use the triple beam balance, and you're like, what in the world is that? Well, nobody likes to feel like an amateur, so you've come to the right place. Give me a couple minutes and I'm gonna make you a pro at using this tool in the science classroom. So first of all, you might be wondering, why do they call this thing a triple beam balance? Well, actually it's got one, two, three different beams, and when the thing balances, you're ready to take a measurement. I know, it seems kind of obvious, but it took me a while to figure that out. What exactly does the triple beam balance measure? Well, it measures mass. The amount of matter that is in an object. Don't get confused and think that it measures weight. That's a classic beginner mistake. The triple beam balance measures mass. Now you will look a whole lot smarter if you're able to refer to the parts of the triple beam balance with their real names, rather than just calling them uh, that thingy or that sliding thingy. So let's get the basic vocabulary straight. First of all, you've got the pan or the platform. This is where you place the object for which you are measuring the mass. Second, you've got the three beams with their sliding masses. Now, interestingly, two of these beams, the top one and the middle one, have notches, while the one on the bottom does not. Turns out that's really significant, and we'll come back to that later. Next, there is the pointer. That's this part. Of course, it points. And what does it point to? Well, it points to the scale. The scale is this part of the triple beam balance, which has the zero line in the middle of it. When the pointer lines up with the zero line, the triple beam has balanced. Last but not least, we've got a knob back here. This is called the zero adjustment knob. And I'll explain to you what that does in just a minute. So now we're ready to actually start using the triple beam balance. But there's a really important first step that some people don't know about. It's called zeroing the triple beam balance. You see, before you do anything, you have to slide all of the masses all the way to the left. And you have to check to see if the pointer lines up with the zero line. Oftentimes, it does not. From this angle, you can see that even though all of my masses are moved all the way to the left, the pointer does not align with the zero mark. It's pointing somewhere above it. Now this, this is where the zero knob comes into play. As I turn this knob clockwise, the pointer will slowly drop. And if I turn it counterclockwise, the pointer will slowly rise. What I want to do is adjust this knob until the pointer points exactly to the zero line. Place the object you wish to find the mass of in the middle of the pan. Notice how the pointer immediately rises above the zero line. The goal is to get the line on the pointer to exactly match the zero line on the scale by moving these masses. But there's a very particular way you have to move them. You always have to start with the largest mass. You slide it until it drops into the next notch. Never stop the large or medium mass in between notches. If you do this, you'll never be able to get an accurate measurement. If after moving it to the first notch, the pointer is still above the zero line, continue moving the large mass to the next notch. Once the pointer falls below the zero line, you need to move that mass back one full notch. Now you'll proceed to the medium mass and follow the same procedure. Move it one notch at a time, never stopping in between, until Eventually, once again, the pointer will fall below 
the zero line. At this point, you will move the medium mass back one full notch, and you'll continue on to the smallest mass. Now notice there are no notches in the smallest beam. This is because you can move the smallest mass wherever you need to in order to make the pointer line match up with the zero line. Reading the triple beam balance is actually quite simple. It's just basic addition. The largest mass gives you the value for the hundreds place. The medium mass gives you the value for the tens place. The smallest mass, and this is important, it gives you two numbers, both the ones place and the tenths place. A key amateur mistake is to forget that you get two numbers from this last and smallest mass. Let me show you how this works. Here you can see we have 100, 50, and 9 point, and here is where you have to count very carefully, 1, 2, 3, point 0.7. The answer is 159.7 grams. The units we use for mass with the triple beam balance is grams. Here's another example. As you can see, we have zero in the hundreds place, 50 in the tens place, five in the ones place, and 0.5 in the tenths place. Our answer is 55.5 grams. Can you figure out the answer to this one? As you can see, we have 300 in the hundreds place, 30 in the tens place, 0 in the ones place, and 0.9 in the tenths place. Correct answer? 330.9 grams. So there you have it. You're ready to head off to class and impress your friends and your teacher with your incredible knowledge as a triple beam balance pro. Have a great day and stay curious, my friends.